The Grape Nut Flakes program, coming to you from New York City, where we're playing to an audience of men on leave from the armed services and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Dennis Day, Rochester, yours truly, Don Wilson, and our guest conductor, Abe Lyman. <laughs> I met a woman today who has three sons on three different work shifts. Boy, does that big 12-ounce package of delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes get a workout at her house with breakfast time rolling around three times a day. Yes, these days, breakfast may come at odd hours, but whenever it comes time for breakfast, it means time for crisp, toasty grape nuts flakes. A breakfast of malty rich well-tasting all-around nourishment because grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal. Now, whole grain cereals are not only health builders, then they're whole grain because they bring you the important food essentials, vital food factors you need, including iron and two of the health building B vitamins, niacin and B1. So get set for the breakfast shift with delicious, nourishing grape nuts flakes. <laughs> and gentlemen, for the most fantastic introduction of the year. Fantastic? I bring you a famous concert violinist who is making his debut this evening at Carnegie Hall, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Yasha Benny talking. <laughs> And, folks, I'm as nervous as a pizzicato. <laughs> and, Don, that's the truth. I am playing my violin at Carnegie Hall tonight. But, Jack, it's so fantastic. Will you stop saying that? This is a benefit for the Infantile Paralysis Fund, and I'm appearing as a soloist on the same program with Gladys Swarthout, Isaac Stern, Marjorie Lawrence, John Charles, and Thomas. And, uh... That's John Charles Thomas. It's one man. It is? Gosh, I... I sent all three of them Christmas cards. <laughs> anyway, there are uh, going to be a lot more prominent artists there, including Oscar Levant. He's going to be my accompanist. I expect him to drop by and pick me up. Well, Jack, aren't you just a bit nervous appearing with so many musical celebrities? No, why should I be nervous? We all get along fine. I'm very nice to them, and they don't speak to me. <laughs> That is all but Gladys. Uh, Gladys, she thinks my playing is marvelous. Gladys Swarthout? No, Gladys Jones, her maid. <laughs> She's a cousin of Rochester's. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Why don't you grow up? Mary, what do you mean, why don't I grow up? Well, I passed Carnegie Hall just now, and what's the idea of writing your name on all the posters? I didn't write my name, it's printed. You know, I'm uh, making my debut there tonight. Gee whiz. Just think, my first appearance on the concert stage. Gosh. Too bad my old violin teacher can't be there. Too bad he shot himself during your fifth lesson. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that afternoon. I was right in the middle of da 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 ti da ti da ti da 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 ti da and bang. <laughs> And I had five more lessons coming. <laughs> By the way, Mary, you're attending the concert tonight, aren't you? Uh, who else is appearing? Well, there's Gladys Jones. I mean, Swarthout. <laughs> Isaac Stern. John Charles Thomas. John Charles Thomas. Yeah. You know, Jack, that always sounds funny to me, a man with three first names. Yep, John Charles Thomas. Incidentally, it's not commonly known, but I have three first names, too. That's right, Jack Jerk Benny. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's Jack John, Benny. And speaking of unusual names, oh, say Don. Yes, Jack. Uh, come here a minute. This will kill you. What do you think? This will positively amaze you, but it's the truth, you know. What do you think Fred Allen's middle name is? What? Florence. <laughs> Fred Florence Allen, imagine. Well, why in the world did his parents ever name him Florence? Well, I'll give you a hint, Don. Allen didn't shave until he was 33 years old. <laughs> in fact, he, he still wears his garters above his knees. <laughs> Hey, Mervyn, Doris is in the audience. <laughs> no kidding. Huh? You should talk about Alan. I saw a picture of you when you were 15 years old and you were playing with dolls. Well, I still have a couple of dolls on my lap now and then, sister. <laughs> They're still full of sawdust, too. Well, that's the cattiest remark I've ever heard. Uh, speaking of cats, whatever became of that girl you were engaged to? Speaking of cats, what girl? Uh, the one with the big grin and the whiskers. <laughs> Cut that out. You're having a jolly time tonight, aren't you? Hey, Mr. Benny, is it all right if I take my girl to... Oh, the... hello. Hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, what did you want, kid? I said, is it all right if I take my girl to your concert at Carnegie Hall? Well, sure, Dennis. Is she a music lover? Is she? She's got a short thumb from pushing nickels in jukeboxes. <laughs> well, she... <laughs> well, she... She does like music. Uh, where does your girlfriend live, Dennis? If I knew where she lived, I wouldn't be wasting my time at a concert. <laughs> well, you'll enjoy it, Dennis. There are a lot of great artists on the program. There's uh, Jean Pierce, uh, Itzio Pinza, Joseph and Rosina Levine, Deans Taylor. Yeah, and don't forget John Charles and Thomas. Uh, wait a minute. I, I made that same mistake. It's John Charles Thomas, Dennis. Holy smoke, has he got four names? Dennis is you. Oh. <laughs> In the blue you. suit here. What? In the blue suit here. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, kid. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, kid, uh, speaking of John, Charles, and Thomas, uh, how about a song from you, huh? Okay, but I'll never top him. So what? For heaven's sake, I don't expect to top Hyphen. Aw, oh, Jack, you're just being modest. You're as good as Hyphus any day. What? You don't think they'd let you play in Carnegie Hall unless you were one of the world's greatest violinists. Well, that's a lovely compliment. Thanks, Mary. You're welcome, it also says here. <laughs> Don't spoil it. You always have to do that. Huh? Well, I don't know about anyone else, but personally, I think Mr. Benny is one of the finest violinists of this earache. That's era. <laughs> earache. Well, there's two compliments shot, but oh well. <laughs> Sing, Dennis, and let's get on with the show. Huh? Wait a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Wait a minute, buddy. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a half a dollar. <laughs> Hmm. No use waiting. I got to get new glasses. <laughs> who's the, uh, who's the wire from, Mary? Uh, it's from your father. Oh, good old dad. Uh, what does he say? Uh, dear son, congratulations on your appearance in Carnegie Hall tonight. Please let me know how your full dress suit goes over. <laughs> he made me a beauty, folks. The tails change color like a peacock. <laughs> uh, sing, Dennis. Well, I'll probably get plugged for this, but I got a cold. All right, do the best you can. What do you care? Now I see it 
never was me. It was someone else right from the start. You're dreaming, he's dreaming, I'm dreaming too. A free dreams are one too many, for oh, my dream can never come true you love him he loves you I love you too the three dreams are one too many for oh, my dream can never come true my hoping that you would love me was only a from the picture Powers Girl, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that's one of the numbers you sing in the picture, isn't it? Yes, sir. You ought to see it, Mr. Benny. I play the part of a fellow who has more money than brains. Oh, oh. It's sure hard to act like you got money, by golly. <laughs> well, I, I imagine it is. Oh, hello, Abe. Hi, Jack. Abe Lyman, fellas. <laughs> All right, Abe, stop shaking hands over your head like a prize fighter. What a character. Hey, before I forget it, Jack, congratulations. I hear you're going to play at uh, Canarsie Hall tonight. <laughs> no use talking. Phil Harris is a genius. Really. <laughs> That's Carnegie Hall on 57th Street. By the way, Ever, you coming to the concert? I'd like to, Jack, but that highbrow music gives me a rash. A what? A rash. Oh. Speaking of highbrow music, Jack, I've written a message which includes the names of various operas, concealed in a very clever manner. <laughs> oh, fine. Last week it was birds, now it's operas. Yeah. Huh? Well, now, see if you can pick them out, Jack. The operas? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing tomorrow morning, mm. go into your kitchen and have a dish of toasty brown sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. I know they're good because I eat of them every day. <laughs> Well, there's Faust and Aida. Whether you live in a white house, a red house, or a tanhauser... Tanhauser? <laughs> you love America's fastest-growing flake cereal. So remember, folks, even if you're feeling Lowen, you will grin with Grape Nuts Flakes. <laughs> Poor Lowen grin really got dragged in there. But, Don, that was all right. I'll see that you get a raise for that. But, Jack, with the new ceiling on salaries, you can't give raises. Yes, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Uh, go away, Don. Go away. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, we are going to present a gripping drama of the Old South, entitled... Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in the hall just now, and there's a... Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in the hall just now, uh, How are you a... feeling, kid? Oh, I was here before, remember? Oh, oh, yes, yes, that's right, in the blue suit. I... Uh... Uh, what do you want, Dennis? Well, there's a man waiting for you out in the hall, and he says for you to hurry up. The man out in the hall. Oh, that must be Oscar Levant. Come on in, Oscar. <laughs> Hello.
hello, Jack. Are you all ready? Yes, I'm ready to go. Well, after I see you're prepared to accompany me on the piano tonight, do you always wear those white gloves? These are my hands. I just came from the blood bank. Oh. <laughs> Very good. I'll have to watch out for this guy. He's sharper than a buck too. <laughs> uh, I'll be through here in a few minutes, Oscar. Then we'll hop in a cab and go over to Carnegie Hall. Just think, Benny and Levant playing a duet. Let's walk. Maybe we'll get run over before we get there. <laughs> That's all right. I got to be on my toes, dear. This guy's making a <laughs> monkey out of me. <laughs> oh, by the way, Oscar, I think you know everybody here, don't you? Sure. Oh, Mary, didn't I see you at the store club last night? The store club? Yes, you were dancing with that South American. Oh, that was Jack with a black toupee. <laughs> I was in bed by 10 o'clock last night. Although I couldn't sleep, I was so nervous thinking about our concert tonight. You were nervous. My wife had to pull me off the windowsill three times. <laughs> I gotta watch out. He's an ad living fool, you know? <laughs> oh, Oscar, I don't think you know Abe Lyman, our band leader. I've known Abe for years. Sure, we sat together at Rubens last night. Say, Oscar, you know, that was a pretty good uh, bowl of soup I drank. You didn't drink that soup. You auditioned it. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it, Oscar. I was just gonna ad lib something like that. <laughs> Honest, I was. You couldn't ad lib a soup with a nose full of pepper. <laughs> I couldn't, eh? Well, go ahead and say something. Go ahead, ad lib. Well? Go ahead. Say something funny. Well, uh... Well... This seems to be a good time to say hello to my mother. Hello, Mom! <laughs> well, I could say something funny, but how can I think with that darn Dennis Day standing there staring at me? Well, that sweat rolling down your forehead fascinates me. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that hard. Well, anyway, Oscar, stick around. I'll be with you in a minute. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I start to announce, we're going to do a satire on one of radio's most intelligent and popular programs. Information, please. Wait a minute. You said we were going never to mind, do... Never mind, never mind. And we have prevailed upon Mr. Oscar Levant to come over here this evening and be our guest expert. I come over here to pick you up and take you to Carnegie Hall. Well, for heaven's sake, Oscar, as long as you're here, let's have some fun. It's a small enough favor to ask me after I got you on that concert. You got me on? Yes. You better lay off that Benzedrine, brother. <laughs> All right, be a sport. I certainly can't do a program like Information, Please, with dopes like Abe Lyman and Dennis Day. And you. And me. Now, cut that out. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, right after a number by Abe Lyman and his orchestra, we'll present our own version of the... I'll take it. That must be Rochester. I told him to bring my full-dress suit over here. Hello? Hello, oh, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Yes, Rochester. I'm just leaving the hotel, boss. I've got your top half white tie and tail. That's tail. Tail. One of them got caught in the elevator. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'll, I'll certainly look funny playing my violin in Carnegie Hall with one tail. You might as well face it, boss. You're going to look funny anyway. <laughs> That's one of the most careless things I ever heard. I guess I'll have to wear my tuxedo. Your tuxedo? Yeah. Did you press it like I told you to? Well, I pressed the coat all right, but I had a long phone call during the pants. <laughs> oh, so you left the hot iron on my pants. Where'd you burn them? I think the French word is derriere. <laughs> Well, I'll be... Well, what am I going to do? I can bring along some black paint. <laughs> Never mind that. I'll just have to be careful how I take my bow. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I have another idea. I think I'll wear my blue serge suit. That blue serge is awful shiny, boss. It is not shiny. I wish I had a diamond that threw off a glare like that. <laughs> Look, Rochester, no excuses. You get over here right away with my blue serge suit. Goodbye. Goodbye, boss. Sorry, Oscar, I'll have to wear a blue serge suit tonight. Will that be all right? Sure, I'm wearing a leopard skin myself. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What a guy. He's really on the beam. Play, Lima. <laughs>
That was I Can't Give You Anything But Love. Sorry, Abe, we had to cut this kind of short, but that was I Can't Give You Anything But Love played by Abe Lyman and his Hotel Lincoln Orchestra. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Abe at the Lincoln. I don't get it. Who asked you to? Be thankful you got a plug. <laughs> and now, Don, I think it's about time for, uh... Now, who's that? Come in. Yes, sir? Is this the Jack Benny program? I'm supposed to be in your play tonight. Oh, yes, you were going to be the villain. Uh, what's your name? Joe Besser. Messer? No, Besser! <laughs> oh, well, I'm... Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Besser. We're not doing a play this evening. Now, wait a minute. I want to act! All right, calm down. I'll find something for you to do. You better, you old crazy you. <laughs> now, sit down, please. All right, Don, let's get started. And now, folks, we bring you our version of information, please, with our noted raconteur, lecturer, and book reviewer of the Breeders' Gazette, Clifton Bellyman. Thank you. Thank you, Milton Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you all know the rules of information, please. I will read several questions submitted by our listeners. And for each question which is not answered by our board of experts, we will give away a page from the Encyclopedia Britannica <laughs> and one grape nut flake. Are the grape nut flakes here, Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. The registers are loaded. Good. Now, I'd like to have you meet our board of experts. First, Mr. Oscar Levant, noted pianist or pianist. Which is it, Oscar? Pianist or pianist? What's the difference? After tonight, I may be washed up. <laughs> I gotta watch this guy. He's dynamite. <laughs> and next, Miss Mary Livingston, well-known authority on poetry. Have you a sample for us, Miss Livingston? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Shining up above so high, don't you know there's a demo? <laughs> very, very good. And now, Mr. Abe Lyman, noted authority on Shakespeare and literary light. There's a dim out there, too. You said it. Mr. Dennis Day, world-famous authority on. On what? And last but not least... <laughs> sit down, Dennis. Sit down. Mr. Joe Besser, authority on archaeology, ichthyology, and paleontology. Well, get him! <laughs> and now, folks, we will proceed... You old crazy you! <laughs> We will proceed with information, please. Our, <laughs> our first question comes from Miss Bernice Butterball of Baked Potato, Idaho. <laughs> Miss Butterball wants to know if you can name three presidents of the United States whose names begin with W. Well, I see you have your hand raised, Mr. Day. That's nerves. It just blew up. <laughs> Don't you know a president whose name begins with W? Will you give me a hint? Yes. So who was the Washington Monument named after? George Monument. <laughs> That's right, George Monument, Washington. And now let's have another president beginning with W. Wendell Wilkie. <laughs> Wilkie didn't win, Mr. Levan. Well, he's working, that I know. I gotta watch that boy. He's making a straight man out of me. And now, second, a president whose name begins with W. I'm waiting. Ah, oh, Mr. Besser, I see you have your hand up. Oh, it's not for that. <laughs> well, it looks like this butterball has stumped the expert. So we are sending her immediately a page from the Encyclopedia Britannica and a grape nut plate. Now here's a letter. Here's a letter. Here's a letter from Dr. Bert Scott of Beverly Hills, California. Dr. Scott is a dentist and he says, Dear Mr. Benny, I have written and written and if you don't remit promptly, I will... Whoops. How that oh, here's a question from Mr. Joe Jackson of Jackson, Georgia. Mr. Jackson wants to know what the following girls have in common. 
Joan Crawford, Joan Leslie, Joan Bennett, Joan Fontaine. Oh, shut up! Not so bad! <laughs> this, Miss Livingston, what have the following movie stars in common? Joan Crawford, Joan Leslie, Joan Bennett, and Joan Fontaine. None of them will work with you. Well, that's so. Well, thanks to your levity, Miss Livingstone, we have lost another page from the encyclopedia and a grape nut flake. Now, here, here's a question in your field, Mr. Levant. Incidentally, you haven't gotten anything tonight. You're referring to money, of course. I'm referring to answers. Now, I'm going to play a musical selection and I want you to identify the number. A second. Not so loud! <laughs> Mr. Besser, please. Now, I'll play it again. <laughs> I'll play it again, Mr. Levant, and see if you can identify it. <laughs> now, what's the name of that number? Its name is Mud. It used to be Souvenir. <laughs> it's still Souvenir. Now, I'll give you one more chance. To oh, watch. boss! Boss! Fine, what do you want, Rochester? Look what time it is. You gotta get over to that concert. That's right, it's getting late. Did you bring my blue serge suit? Here it is. Wait a minute, that's my green suit. It was blue when you bought it. Well, it's too late to change it now. Come on, Oscar, let's walk over to Carnegie Hall. Yep, the last mile. Oh, don't be so pessimistic. Play, Lyman, come on. <laughs> gets a mighty shock when a youngster shoots up overnight. Mom sees little Tommy playing with his blocks, and then first thing you know, Tommy's curls are gone, and behold, he's a man. Well, not so long ago, Grape Nuts Flakes was just a little shaver, and now, why, just in the past three years, the increase in your purchase of Grape Nuts Flakes has been more than that of all the other ready-to-eat cereals put together. And there's a reason. In fact, two big reasons. First, it's that sweet-as-a-nut, malty-rich flavor. And it's that grand all-around nourishment. For Grape Nuts Flakes, being a whole grain cereal, bring you vital food factors of natural whole wheat. That means they're one of the eight types of basic foods recommended as part of your daily diet by our national nutrition program. So join the swing to better breakfast by asking for delicious, nutritious Grape Nuts Flakes America's fastest growing breakfast cereal. That was the last number of the 16th program of the new Grape Nut Flake series. And I want to thank Oscar Levant for appearing here tonight, and also Joe Besser, one of the stars of the Olsen and Johnson hit Sons of Fun. Next Sunday night, folks, we'll be broadcasting from Fort Meade, Maryland. And tomorrow, we'll be seeing you boys of the Coast Guard at Manhattan Beach. With my whole gang, with my whole gang, including Danny Kay, the star of Let's Face It. Good night, folks. been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>